Why aren't we making stuff? Why aren't we making stuff? Because we have to pause for a little bit and tell everyone about uh, our plans to make stuff. So, Henry, when did we meet? Yeah, we met on you know, day two of open source when you know you came by our booth where we were showing off our 3D printers, and we sort of just started talking, right? We we talked about what our shared vision is, what we want to see in the 3D printing industry, and we very quickly realized that we all just want to make 3D printing more accessible, more economical, and more useful to everybody to enable people to bring their ideas to life. And that's sort of when we got the idea of, you know, maybe we should work together. I think when we met and we had first conversation, it might have seemed like I was just wandering by your booth, but actually I was looking for you guys. Me and many people at Formlabs have been following what you've been showing over the last few months of your progress with Micronics. I think in our first conversation, it was pretty clear to me that these guys are the real deal, very talented at engineering and building great products, and I would love to find a way to work with them. Getting an SLS machine like printing at all with a small team and small resources, that is very impressive. I mean, basically, nobody has gone from sort of zero to a working polymer powder bed system with as little time and money as you guys have. Uh, you had compacted the machine substantially, build volume to printer volume ratio, which is something we think about a lot, and which like Fuse One is better than other polymer powder bed systems. But you guys took that ratio even even further. Yeah, I came from Hong Kong, so everything needs to be small and tidy. <laughs> so there's a little bit of influence on that. But when I first brought up the idea of joining forces and you coming to Form Labs, you said. Maybe, but we need to think about it. And you know, probably wasn't the first thing on your mind at that time. What got you from that point to thinking, yeah, this makes sense and we should work together? I've been following FormLab since the beginning. I've always looked up to you and your team on how you were able to bring SLA to be so accessible. And so to get a recognition from FormLabs is it means a lot to you know both Luke and I. I think a lot of it just comes down to personally being very impatient. Scaling hardware is painful and it's slow. All the VCs out there, they want software as a service because you can infinitely scale it instantly. But with hardware, you actually need to put in the work, scale up manufacturing, then scale up the support, then the manufacturing, then the support, and it's like this whole iterative process of having to bootstrap yourself basically to be able to get to a point where we think we want to get to. And that process took four maps 10, 12, 13 years. We are just thinking, is there any way we can make that happen quicker? I think Formlabs has been relatively fast in our growth, at least when I look at other companies in our industry. But I see it the same way that like, the vision for what we have at Formlabs today, we had that within the first few years of the company. We had already started working on SLS. Like we could imagine this point and had a rough idea of what the company would look like. But it took years and years to build it up because we had to iteratively learn and fundraise and, and grow the company. And like looking back, it could have gone much faster. Now we're taking a big step to join forces and work together going forward. What's going to happen with uh, Micron and Kickstarter? So the plan is that we are going to cancel our Kickstarter campaign, uh, not take any money. Luke and I will be moving to Boston where we will be working at Formlabs, leading the development of the next generation of 3D printers. And we really appreciate all the support and you know, trust from everyone who has backed our campaign. As a thank you, we want to give everybody a $1,000 credit towards any Formlabs printer or future printers. And a lot of the innovation that we also saw comes from the material side. So we are also providing a free open material license to the Formlabs printer so that you can play with any material you want. I think one of my favorite videos about our printer is from Ben Krasno from Flight Science where he mixed in a special catalyst with the nylon powder, printed it, and then activated the catalyst with a high power pulse laser to make printed electronic circuit board traces directly on the plastic parts. And with an open material license on Formless printer, we are hoping to you know, spark this kind of innovation, experimenting with 
novel and innovative printing technologies and messing with different materials. As someone who went through a really similar journey as yourself and had a successful Kickstarter, that was an awesome moment. It would have been really hard uh, to cancel it. Why is that the right move? It's definitely a tough decision for us, but I think if we look at the big picture and what's going to happen in five years, I would think it is the right call. Because Micron, even though it works, it is very much a first generation product from a young, very, very young startup. At Formlabs, there's you know, already a huge team of talented people who are experts in their own fields. You know, if we want to design a part that's going to be injection molded, you know, there are people with a decade of experience who can do it better than we can, you know, ever do. You know, that would really allow us to focus on the high level system architecture stuff, take what we have learned, our experience with Micron, combining that with user feedback that Formlabs has gathered over the last decade to give customers the best experience and the technology that can truly be relied on. What Luke and I really like doing and is somewhat good at doing is solving really high level complex problems. But what we're actually doing is, you know, spending like 60% of our time replying to support emails from the, you know, 20,000 subscribers we have on YouTube, cutting up stupid foam packaging you know that took us eight hours to cut up all the foams for the machines we shipped out to content creators i think it's it's really similar to how it went with form labs and the form one the form one we laid out a concept for a product a new class of product that got people really excited we sold a bunch of them but we didn't deliver fully on that concept um, a bunch of people got the printer, a bunch of people used it, but it wasn't uh, as great as it could have been. And it took us to Form 2, the second generation, to really incorporate everything that we had imagined should be in a product. So the way I think about it is we're helping Micronix skip the first version and go straight to the second version even faster than if um, you would have had to do it uh, sequentially. FDM, SLA have both been pretty much, you know, completely democratized at this point. But, you know, where is SLS? You know, the fields is great, but it's still, you know, $18,000 starting price. So what we want to do is like, hey, can we just build something for everyone? And it turns out there is a reason why SLS is taking so long, because it's the most finicky 3D printing technology. I agree. I've worked on FDM, SLA, and SLS printers, and SLS barely works. The machine either wants to just make a mess or melt all the powder inside of it. It's always like on the edge of uh, breaking. We found it very challenging to bring to market. I think we made a really big leap with Fuse 1, but it's clear you can go further in making it more accessible. And that's why we're really excited to, to work with you. Take that further and faster. So now that we're wrapping up all the work to get a deal done, what's next? Well, I just gotta move my fish tank and my CNC mill, and then we can head over here to Boston and just plug into the matrix of the Formlabs repository of everything we've learned so far, and just start working on the next 3D printer. The CNC mill in your dorm room. You can, you can leave that. You don't need to bring that. We've got a good one in the shop. 